I am now at some sea stacks high up on the western coast of Lewis for sunset. Obviously being the west coast, sunset is the perfect time of day to come here. And again, seascape photography. I started to get the bug for seascape photography when I went to Madeira and I saw some of the massive waves that were crashing on the north coast. Being in the middle of the Atlantic, you got some great waves. And, and here on the western coast of Lewis, at these sea stacks, which have a name which I can't remember, and even if I did, I couldn't pronounce, and I'd probably, I'd probably trigger the whole Scottish nation. So I won't. This is the west coast of Lewis, therefore, a lot of the Atlantic Ocean is out there, the North Atlantic. The swell isn't too big today. It might get a little bit bigger towards sunset when the sun actually goes down. It's right behind me at the moment. I've got another hour and a half, two hours until it hits the horizon. But just take a look at this. So, settings. I've got a polarizing filter on today to try and get some more deep blue hues out of the sea. I've got a six stop ND filter, which I might put down to a three stop ND filter when the light dies down a bit, because I want anywhere between, I guess, half a second to maybe up to four or five seconds to get some of the patterns in the sea. And then I will blend together what looks good so some of the water coming over the rocks, some of the patterns in the sea between the rocks, and I'll just build up a really nice picture um, from a few different shots from each viewpoint that I'm taking. So, fingers crossed it works out. Fingers crossed some of these high clouds move out of the way and I get a bit of extra light shining down on the sea stack down there. But this is epic, absolutely epic. Unfortunately, the sun was only out for about 15 minutes before it headed behind some clouds. I didn't have the time to find the best composition whilst I still had light. However, I managed to get a few good ones. This first one with the light, getting some texture in the water, the coast lighting up to the stacks, and the polarizing filter helping show off the sea. And this second one zoomed closer in as I tried to balance my composition left and right with the sea stacks, although you can see the light had gone by this point. I made the fatal error of giving up, thinking the light was gone and just before we got back to the van, the sky exploded. You can see I hurriedly started getting my camera back out. Uh, don't mind that. I went a bit crazy, shooting down low to get a blurred foreground, catching the last of the day's light on the foreground rocks, although the sea stacks in the distance didn't get much. Then I popped on the telephoto lens trying to capture the amazing colours and textures in the sea. Difficult handheld with such little light, however. And finally, zooming right into the Flannan Isles on the horizon beneath the fiery sky, even being able to make out the lighthouse. Back on the Isle of Skye, and this time walking the usual route out of the Karan car park. If you watched a previous video of mine, I parked in the Karang car park pre-dawn and walked up the Trottenish Ridge, which is over there. And it's currently covered in snow, I'll show you that in a second. But this time we decided we're going to try and get behind the needle this time. Something that we didn't do last time, if you watched my last video from the Karang. We nearly got hit by a boulder on the way up. It was a little bit scary and we decided to go back down and just fly the drone behind. But this time, plucked up the courage to find a different route up to behind the needle at the crank. How to get up to the needle. So, like I said last time, do not go up the right hand side. Try not to follow too closely behind other people coming up because there's a lot, a lot of loose scree and some really big rocks that will just come loose and start tumbling down this mountain. It's 
very, very steep. So take a lot of care. Bring walking sticks. They will help you a lot, especially on the steep slopes. If you get a little bit tired, dig them into the ground, lean on them, use them as leverage to pull yourself up the mountain and use them just to give you a little bit of extra balance when you're coming up here. So as you walk to the prison, at the bottom there's this big rock cairn that somebody's built, or everyone's built, I don't know. But there's a path that then leads off to the left as you're looking towards the needle. That path will peter out, it looks, it's quite visible at the start and then it peters out a bit, but it zigzags all the way up the left hand side of the needle until you get up to the ridge line. And then you can just walk across the top of the ridge line and then the path will swing round and this path will obviously lead up to behind the needle. There is the path here that carries on and should go up to the table behind. So we're going to try that out in a minute once I've taken a few more photos of the needle here. As I sit here next to the needle, I want to talk a little bit about composition. Now, you can't see it, but just below me are uh, all of the, the paths that are running through behind the needle. And those can serve as sort of like maybe leading lines and lead your eye through the frame of the composition. Obviously, you've got the needle in the middle. The background is the Trottenish Ridge, which is currently dusted in snow at the top. Didn't quite get a full sunrise this morning. The needle hasn't really lit up, unfortunately. But we did get some little bit of, little bit of color in the sky. So that's, that's something at least for the very sweaty, warm hike up here. And you've got these cliffs either side as well of the needle, which creates balance in the frame. So two big dark elements on either side, one big dark element in the middle, and then the path leading through and around just sort of to, to lead your eye through the darkness out into the light and the big expanse behind. It's pretty beautiful, really. The amazing Kaz was kind enough to head down to the end of the path that you can see here. I wanted a person as a point of reference for scale, a person being a fantastic point of reference to show how tall the needle actually is. I made sure that from my angle she was on the very last bit of path, as if standing on the edge of a cliff with the background in the, well, background. This did take a bit of post-processing work, but I went for a Tolkien-esque edit, lots of glow and a fairy tale style landscape leading lines which lead you up to class, plus all the other compositional elements I just explained. And I also forgot to mention this, so I'm recording it on my phone. If you do loose some scree and it starts rolling down the mountain, shout below. So anybody who's below you will know that there's stuff coming down, they can look up and at least try and dodge it. Nobody shouted that for us. We just looked up and saw a big boulder crashing down a couple of years ago. Very scary. So do remember, shout below and stay safe. Unfortunately, we didn't get the sun down at the needle. So we decided to trek up past the needle and come up to what's called the table. Now, this is one of the highest parts of the landslide that isn't the ridge, obviously, because the ridge didn't slide down. And you get these epic views of the rest of the huge rocks that have come down and you can just see the tip of the needle behind me, maybe. Maybe if I move, you can see the tip of the needle. So the sun's starting to come out. It's about, what time is it, Kaz? Half eight. Half eight. So two hours after sunrise. And fortunately the sun literally came out for three minutes while we were here. Now we're just gonna have a cup of coffee and some breakfast. And um, hopefully the sun will come out a little bit more when I go back down past the needle and get some more shots there. We did get a bit of sun with breakfast and a fresh brew coffee. Although I struggled a bit finding a composition here. I ended up going with the layers looking towards the needle from the table. On the way back, I whopped out the bazooka to get snow on top of the Trottenish Ridge, settling for a simple composition, showing layers and focusing on simple colors. And lastly, 
I also practiced some more person for scale photos, trying to get a sense of how far away I should stand for different focal lengths. It wasn't long after this we got a sausage back from the food van in the car park. We'd earned it. So you join me back at one of my favorite ever sunset locations and I am back at Elgol on the south of the Isle of Skye, looking back towards the Cullen Mountains. If it's a bit noisy, it's because there are some waves crashing below me. Everything that I've learned since I came here in September 2021 about seascape photography, shutter speeds, ND filters, to try and get a nice foreground leading up to that amazing, amazing mountain range in the background, the Cullens. The clouds are clipping the top, atmosphere. The sun is setting over there, atmosphere. You can see some snow dusting the tops of the mountains. Just everything is coming together right now and it's great. If you're gonna come here, 24 mil on the shoreline is probably where you wanna be just to get the mountain range in. I've gone and put my 20 mil prime on because I just want a little bit of extra range and a little bit of extra foreground. So you really do wanna go wide angle when you come down here. So, in terms of ND filters, last time I came here with a 15 and a 10, and I was always getting the shutter speed timing wrong. What I've done now is I've now got a three and a six. So I've been using the six, but as the sun is setting, I've now switched to the three. It means I can keep a decent aperture, a low ISO, and get a nice, clean, crisp shot with lots of dynamic range to play with. So, it's, hopefully it's gonna be epic. Let me show you what I've got. Here's the scene. I've got waves coming in from left to right. And then I've got the mountain range in the background. So if we see here at the moment, I have got F16, about 1.3 seconds, ISO 100, I've got a three-stop ND filter and a one-stop soft grad on, which unfortunately is, is darkening, <laughs> obviously, the top half, including that rock. So I'll have to lighten that up again in post, but at least I'm gonna keep the dynamic range and hopefully not blow out what I've got in the sky. What I'm gonna do is for each location I put my camera, I'm gonna take one dark shot, so at least I've got one or two sky shots that aren't overexposed. I'll just put it down a stop or two just to make sure that I can blend it in Photoshop later and I've got a full scene properly exposed across the whole frame. It's not long till sunset now, probably about 45 minutes. Fingers crossed this is gonna be epic. I think I've found my spot and I think I'm gonna to stick to it because I like this composition a lot. Last time I was running around like a headless chicken trying so many different things and uh, I lost my head a bit. And this is something I want to talk about is the fear of missing out, FOMO. I got it this morning up at the Kerrang when I was up at 4 a.m. and trying to rush to get up there. And I was just fearing that I was gonna miss out on that, that little bit of morning light that lit up the sky and lit up the rock perfectly. The sun didn't come out, so I didn't miss out on anything. But I've got to get over that fear of missing out and just accept what's in front of me and take photos and enjoy it. Click. It's so hard to get over FOMO, especially when you're on a deadline for good light. After filming that segment, I started chatting to some other photographers that had come down for sunset, a lovely bunch of people by the way, and I moved over to a new spot where the waves were lapping up against smaller rocks. This allowed me to look for leading wave crash lines up to the mountains in the background. As you can see in this first shot, the light on the rocks and seaweed is amazing, but the big rock in the middle is such a big distraction from the main background subject, the Cullens. But when I found these leading waves coming through the rocks, splashing in the sky, being backlit by the setting sun, it was a recipe for epicness. Well, that's actually not a bad album name, that. When the sun did set, I again popped on the bazooka to pick out some mountain details. Simple composition here, which I thought looked great in black and white. Morning and welcome back to my favourite tree. I am on the route to and from Elgol at the moment. 
Last night we spent it at Elgol. It was absolutely beautiful sunset. I think I did even better in terms of my landscape photography, my composition that I did two years ago when I was last here. Now I've come back to this tree, which I had some epic photos of in the afternoon where the light was coming down behind it, backlighting the tree and just creating this amazing glow. This morning, it's a little bit more dull, but it's very moody behind on the mountains. If I pan around a little, you can see you've got snow up there. The clouds are just hanging around. So what I'm doing at the moment is I'm going to put my 20 mil on and my 24 to 70. I'm going to try and get up close and try and isolate that tree between the mountains uh, with the tree branches going up into the cloud and that cloud just giving it that backdrop. Hopefully that will work out. And once that's done, I'm just gonna have a play around, have a look at a few more compositions before I head back over to the van in the forestry car park and have some bacon sausage and beans for breakfast because it is my birthday after all. Anyway, I'm now gonna show you the photos of this tree. This was the best I could do with the clouds moving quickly in the background. I achieved the most important aspect of this composition, making sure the tree was completely isolated and not crossing the background. Last time, you can see I had backlighting and leaves which helped separate the tree. Without that on this occasion, plus the fact the tree had no leaves yet, this was the best I could do. I am back at the Kale of Timor. Uh, two years and my pronunciation hasn't gone any better. But the big triangular mountain and at the waterfalls. If you watch my last videos, I came here a few times over the summer of 2021, September, after a dry spell and there was nothing in the river at all. It was just not worth photographing, but it's currently raining. It's been raining for days. The path across here is an absolute quagmire, just filth everywhere but I've got my big boots on, so it's not a problem for me. I just think it'd be interesting to see how much better I've got in the last 18 months at photography. And also the same as with Elgol, having the right ND filters, not a 10 stop this time. I've got a six and a three. I do have a 10 stop, but I'm gonna use a six and a three and have a shorter shutter speed just to capture some of the texture and movement in the water and maybe try out a couple of compositions or just do the same ones as last time. It is raining and Sony, I know you're not gonna be watching this, but if you are, please sort out your hot shoe. I, I can only, I, I, all I have to do is take my camera close to where moisture exists and it starts playing up because any droplet of water in that hot shoe just sends, sends the camera crazy. So please sort out a product to fix that or fix it in newer cameras or just do something to help us out because it's it's a nightmare so i'm gonna have to try and cover up my camera but here we go let's go and have a play in the rain eventually i got lucky and the clouds cleared and the sun dropped behind the mountain lighting up the sky it was epic with the right nd filters this time I managed to get optimal shutter speeds, about one fifth of a second in this instance, to create this incredible texture in the water. Good morning. Unfortunately, this is gonna be my last morning, and last day in Scotland, as my holiday is finishing and I've gotta go back to work next week. But as you can see, the sun is about to rise and we have a bit of mist. So yesterday after at Tivemore and shooting the waterfalls there again. I also went back to the White House, you can, uh, which is the, I can't remember the name of the body, but the body on the other side of the mountain and the light was just fantastic. So I did some shots there. I did some shots looking back down Glencoe as we were driving to this location. So this is Lagangarb Hut, owned by the Scottish National Trust. The light just keeps getting better and better as the sun started to set. The snow dusted peaks adding to the incredible atmosphere. And this second shot is currently hanging on my wall. The rib leading up to the heart and the best light I have personally seen in Glencoe. And lastly, heading down to Bridge of Orkey, 
I saw this awesome foreground and beams of light coming out of the valley, so I had to pull over and take a couple of snaps. And once we got here, sunset was epic. The sky just lit up and there was a herd of about 15 deer that were just crossing next to where we parked up. And I got some incredible deer shots, which I will show you now. As you can probably tell from this B-roll Kaz took from the passenger side of the van, I'm no wildlife photographer. But the deer here were outside a pub and relatively used to humans being near. I got a couple of amazing portraits of these majestic animals before we headed down to where we intended to park for the night. But when we got there, the sky exploded and I went on the hunt in the last days of light capturing this amazing beast. The sun is about to come up here and I am going to put my 100 to 400 on because I am really tired and I don't want to trek all the way down there. And I'm just going to pick out some, some trees, some bit of the mist and when it starts to get backlit by the sun that's coming up over there, Hopefully it's going to be amazing. I'm also on the lookout for some morning deer. Fingers crossed we get some wandering over there, but I have no idea where the herd's gone overnight. So, just have to wait and see. Sorry, I must interject here. This location is around the Bridge of Orkey. I'm going to put the map just up here. What was that? <laughs> no, 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 no. Apologies for the quality of this particular section of the video because I'm on my phone. I'm not sure if the frost this morning has just frozen the battery on my DJI pocket, but the sun came out. I moved down towards this shore and I have got so many photos. Unfortunately, not many with birds flying over because they just didn't seem to fly in the frame when I had it there, but I did lot with the 24 to 70 and over there I've got these trees uh, those trees and um, this tree line I've got some photos with some mist over here the mist is mostly gone now so I'm gonna have to just go and take the van back to the place where we rented it from unfortunately and leave Scotland but there's a little island with some trees on in the distance over there and I was shooting it at blue hour before the sun actually came over the mountain and it was lovely with all of the mist around it. Then the sun came and just backlit all of the mist that was sitting on top of the lake there, I should say, the loch there. And it was just amazing, this orange glow of the backlit mist sitting on top. I also, because I'm on this little riverbank here, all of these rocks, I put the 24 to 70 on and I played around with putting the camera down on the floor and creating some bokeh baubles, some golden bokeh baubles with some of the trees in the composition. So I shot some at 24, some at 70. I'm going to have a look at how well those have turned out, but I think I have got a number of epic shots in the last 90 minutes. But now it's time to go and clean the van and take it back. Mm, I don't want to leave Scotland, but here's some of the photos. First off, we have these epic golden bokeh baubles. The river was relatively still as well, allowing me to get in the reflections too. I just love the tones of this image. And here's the backlit little island that I was talking about. Simple central composition and awesome morning light. Just before the sun came up, dawn pastel colours on a lovely S bend in the river, the morning frost still on the ground as well. And sticking with simple shots of mountains, a snowy peak with a waistband of cloud just catching the dawn sun. And last but not least, this pre-dawn vista which looks more like a watercolour painting than a photo. I just love it. If you haven't yet, why not check out the first half of this Scotland trip where I explored Luscan Tyre on the Isle of Harris. And as always, a like and subscribe may help me take some ad revenue away from Google so I can spend it on replacing lens caps that I've lost. Until next time, happy snapping.